Hello, everybody. Um, I want to go over arrays a little bit because that was a topic that I introduced in the last uh, announcement, and I wanted you guys to try to look at my code and and figure it out. But uh, arrays are an interesting concept in computer science. You've learned a bit of variable, right? A variable is essentially you know, if it's an integer, it's a number. If it's a, a double, it's a decimal. And we've, you know, you can have string variables that are words, but essentially a variable is a spot in the computer's RAM. So it's a spot in memory and you can put stuff there. So using Microsoft Word to help me with this analogy, um, when I think of a variable, I think of like a little rectangle like that. So there's a, somewhere in, in computer RAM, there's a spot, and in that spot, I'm allowed to put a variable. If I were to, say, make an integer variable, then, um, you know, if I wanted to hold the number 5, okay, well, there, the number 5 is now held in RAM. And if I were to call this variable, if I were to call this, um, you know, let's say I said int, um, and you know counter because counter is a common variable name equals five. What really happens is in the computer's RAM there's this spot and and we refer to it as counter and in there is a five. And if I somewhere else in my program, if later on I have you know one of those lines does that a count plus plus and it increases, then maybe it goes up to six, right? So in my program I can control the variable counter, but what's really going on is there's a spot in RAM that's holding that value, and you know I can change it to whatever I want, like so. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you've been doing this quite a bit, and you may not have even known it. You know when you increase the counter by a certain value, uh, even when you have variables like x position and y position, you know you're creating these variables in RAM and you're giving value to those spots in RAM and then you're referring to them. An array is a little different because with an array, first of all, we have these funny looking brackets there. And when we make an array, let's say I'm gonna make an integer array um, called, just I'll call it X, which is a terrible name, um, but just for this example, I'm gonna do that, call it X. And we're gonna make an integer and I'm gonna put a five there like that. So there's, a line that would declare an array in Java called X. That's bothering me. I won't do that. I'll just call it my array. Um, <clears throat> in computer RAM, what would happen is I would still have a spot in RAM, but now I'm going to have five spots in my one variable. So I now I've got this variable called my array. But it's not just one integer, it's got spots for five of them. And you may think, well, why wouldn't you just declare five different variables? And that's a very valid question. And a lot of times we, you know, we, we might have programs where it makes sense to declare separate variables. But with an array, the way I like to describe it, you know, this is a nice little analogy and it's it's um, it's hopefully visual so you see what's happening. And I can put multiple numbers in, in different spots, you know and do whatever, but I, I like to compare an array to a hotel. So if I live at my house, I can say, well, um, I live at whatever your address is, and that's where I live. It's, it's my house, and that's it. It's just one house. But when you're staying in a hotel, that would be kind of an analogy for an array. Because with a hotel, you know, you wouldn't just give the address of a hotel and say, yeah, I'm staying at this address, you would say, I'm staying at this address, and I'm on this floor, and I'm in this room number. So you have to be more specific. So in that case, you know, if you were in a hotel, you would call the hotel the array, but you would have to specify in the hotel, which compartment are you in? So I can have my array here. And if I want to tell somebody about the number 81, I would have to refer to that spot in the array. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now, interestingly, in Java, most people think, you know, 8, oh, that's in the first spot, and 94 is in the second spot, and this is in the third spot, and that's in the fourth, and that's in the fifth, and you're not wrong in normal English, but in Java, when we code, this is referred to as the zero 
spot. And this is the first. And this is number two, and this is number three. So Java starts at zero. Not all programming languages do, but Java does start at zero. Um, and so just be aware of that Oops, when you are <coughs> doing your arrays. If you want to refer to the, this spot, that's zero. This is one, two, three. And notice that I've declared an integer array that goes up to five, but there actually is no fifth spot. If I try to get to the fifth spot, it actually doesn't exist, which is kind of weird. Okay, so that's the theory behind arrays. We are making one variable that can house multiple things. And in this case that I've done here, it's integers. I could also have an array of strings. And instead of holding numbers, I'd be holding maybe, you know, names uh, like this. So I can have an array of anything. I can have an array of um, <coughs> doubles. I can have an array of wombats. I can have an array of bullets. I can have an array of heroes. And, you know, in Mario, if you think about the game Mario, because we've talked about that before, actually Pac-Man would be better, you can have an array of power pellets or pellets that you collect, right? And so if you have a lot of things, you can have arrays to hold them all in one variable. Now, how is that useful for us? Well, here's my program. And what I have on the screen is an array of wombats. And if you go into the wombat class, you may think, well, I'm going to find an array. But you don't. Because don't forget, the wombat class holds all the recipe that, for the things you want the wombat to do. If I want to make an array of wombats, I'm going to find that here in my world. So if I go to my world code, what you'll notice is I have a timer, and we've talked a little bit about timers, but here's what I did the other day. I said, what is this? And what we have here is an array of wombats. Now, how do you know it's an array? There's your giveaway, and there. When you see those square brackets, that means that you are having an array uh, of whatever, integers, wombats, whatever. And it says num wombats here. What is that? Well, just look right up here. So what I'm making here is I'm making a new array of wombats. There's going to be seven of them. And I'm referring to the array as woms. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So a little further down here, it says what's going on here. Here we have a for loop. And loops and arrays go hand in hand. We use a loop to go through an array and add stuff to it, or take away from it, or do whatever. So, here what I'm doing is I'm starting a loop, and it starts at zero, and it goes up to the number of wombats, which is seven, remember? And every time we go through the loop, we're going to make a new wombat, and we are going to put it into the array at the xth spot. Now that sounds really weird, but the xth spot the first time through the loop is zero. The next time is one. The next time is two, then three, then four, then five, then six. And if you're thinking then seven, no, you're never gonna get to seven because remember num wombats is the number seven. You're gonna do this loop as long as X is less than seven. So if X hits seven, we stop doing the loop. So we are going to make a new wombat and we are going to put a wombat into the array at the zero through sixth spot, never getting to seven. If we were to get to seven, we would get an error, okay? So I make the wombat, I put it into the array, and then I add that object. Remember, right here is a wombat. I just put a wombat into that spot. I wanna put that onto the screen. So I put the wombat onto the screen, this is a spacing where I'm going to say I want the, the x coordinate. This is the x coordinate of the wombat, and it's a math expression. What it says is I want to put it at 50 plus 75 times x. So it's going to start. This is my initial value. This is a linear equation right here. Initial value, and this is my rate of change. So it's going to start at an x coordinate of 50, and every time I go through the loop, it's going to space it out by 75 more, always with a y position of 30. Okay, so this is a for loop 
that goes through and populates an array with wombat objects. It puts the wombats in there and then it adds them to the screen. And by the way, if you were to take this out, the program would still work, but look, they're gone. The reason they're gone is because this line right here, it puts them into an array in the computer's memory. Remember, when we're dealing with variables, it's in computer memory. I have to actually put them on the screen in order for the user to see anything. Okay. Now, lastly, I wrote an act method for the world. This is not something that's given to the world. If you double click on your world, you will not see an act method. I had to write this. So what I did is I wrote an act method so that whenever the program's running, this, this bit of code here is running over and over and over and over and over again. So what it says is, if the timer is above 500 milliseconds, we're going to restart the timer, but we're going to go through all the wombats in the array, and for each one of them, we are going to move them by this much. And if you look up here, that's five. So we are going to take the wombat in the X location, and we are going to set its new location to what it, wherever it was in the X before, plus move val, and we are not going to change its Y coordinate. Okay? Um, and if you're thinking, but I only see one line here, so won't it move just one line, but one wombat? Remember, it's going through all of them. So it's going to go through the array, and it's going to move each one of them. So we get this kind of movement. And if I play around with a couple of the variables, if I play around with the move valve, for example, and make it 10, um, then what will happen is they'll just move further. So not faster, but further. 10 is the amount of pixels that the wombat's going to move. If I want them to move faster, that would be the number that I would change. So if I change that to 250, now they're going to move and hit the edge of the screen pretty quick. There we go. And I haven't coded anything else, so they're all just going to run into each other and it's going to be a big wombat crash. So we don't want that. So that is how arrays work. You have one variable that stores multiple objects, and you can use a loop to go through the array and do the same thing to each object, like get every single one to move. And if you're thinking, then you may think, oh, this has a lot to do with space invaders. Because now I can control all of my invaders and do the exact same thing with them. Okay, so I'm going to end it there. And you can take a look at the next couple of challenges. Hopefully you understood what was going on here. If not, give me an email. Let me know your thoughts.